Hi everyone, my name is Rehab. I am a student entering my final year at the University of Cambridge studying law and you are watching Getting Personal with Team Upside. I think the most difficult part for me was probably knowing what to cut. As far as I remember, my first draft was around 8,000 characters, which is double what a personal statement is supposed to be. I took it to my English teachers and they absolutely um, smashed it to pieces. So getting over my ego first and foremost, but then afterwards realizing really what's important and how you can say something which you put in 10 words in little more than two or three. The biggest source of help for me was probably my English teachers. Um, I think as an aspiring law student and a couple of other subjects might find this too, when you're applying to study a subject that they don't really teach you at school, it's difficult sometimes to find someone who can really help you with the content of your personal statement. But the value I found in my English teachers was firstly, they were very objective. They weren't really connected to the content in that way. So they could give me this quite blunt perspective as to what seemed important to them and what didn't seem important. Naturally, they have a way with words, which was very, very helpful when it came down to it. So I think I'd say my English teachers, interestingly, I don't think I went to anyone who had a connection with law to read my personal statement. So I think that just demonstrates that it's not really necessary to know people in the field, just to have someone who's willing to give it a look over it and a second view. In terms of the initial writing process, it was basically about getting a blank sheet of paper and just splurging everything I'd done in the previous two to three years that had gotten me to that stage. Um, so for instance, I had a, a brainstorm bubble with my A-level subjects and all the like content headers that I'd covered in that. I had the books I'd read that might be relevant, any news articles or anything that I'd followed which I was interested in. And then, you know, the various like lectures you'd gone to or programs you participated in. I think from there on, what you want to do really is start drawing connections between the two because you won't have the word count in your personal statement to try and discuss everything. So um, maybe it's easier if I give an example of that. In my English literature course at A-level, we studied colonial literature. Um, so I started there and we studied this book called Heart of Darkness, which actually discusses a lot of the historical context around slavery and that sort of thing. And I knew the, res the result I wanted to get to was that I was interested in international law. So really, you just start looking at, okay, we start off with my A-level subject. There's then a book that I've read, which is relevant to that. I then listen to this podcast, which leaves me with the course. Um, what you want to show admissions tutors is that, oh, I can't just say, you know, I like talk law, I like international, because you have no clue what you're going to study. But you've done enough research to demonstrate that you have all the foundational elements, which will mean that, of course, you're going to go on to enjoy that subject because you enjoy everything else that it entails. It's difficult because I feel like once you search law personal statements on Google and stuff, you always get the same sort of four or five books that students turn out before they hand in their personal statement, like letters to a law student, more about law, etc. I think it's important to have read those and pick out anything relevant, but really try and explore around your own interests and base your personal statement. Rather than, rather than trying to base it on what you think a model law student is like, try and demonstrate, you know, really and truly genuinely why is it that you're interested in studying that subject um so for me i think by trying to make it relevant to, by drawing connections between my personal interests and things that were taught in the course i think that was how i tried to make my personal statement um, stand out also i think it's um it's uncommon for students to offer opinions or like substantiated opinions so don't go over the top, but it's nice when you say something mildly controversial or a little bit out there sometimes, just to pique their attention and make them remember you. Yeah, this is such an important question for law. I get this with students all the time because I personally know people or had friends who did absolutely incredible legal work experience because they might have the contacts, they might have the connections. But the truth of the matter is, I think especially nowadays, universities are becoming alert to the fact that not all you not all aspiring law students have access to these kind of networks so it wouldn't be a level playing field to compare them on the point of what experience they've done especially i think if you're considering oxbridge you're better off trying to um, prove why you have an interest in actually studying that subject the theory of that subject for what it is than explaining oh um, i'd like to be a lawyer because a lot of what we study will be helpful for someone who wants to be a lawyer, but it's not absolutely pivotal. And a lot of people graduate from law and go on to do like loads of other jobs. So I'd say focus on the actual content of the course, the skills that are required by the course itself. So not really advocacy, but more the reading, the analysis, the writing skills, which will become really, really helpful in how you do the degree. 
and then demonstrate how um, how you're good at those on your personal statement. Maybe put a, a line at the end. Like I did have a line at the end about how you know this law, this degree will help me carry forward my ambitions or something something. Okay, so f- I think I had four, four around four or five drafts. But yeah, that first one. Oh my god, I was gonna cry after this. So I was like, do I even know if I want to do this subject anymore? But yeah, don't send it. The pieces of advice I'd give: don't send it to too many people. Send it to the few that you trust um, and people that can offer you a different perspective on things. Um, and also, if there's something that you're committed to or is really foundational to why you're interested to that subject, if someone advises that you cut it out, just ask yourself whether you want to cut it out um, before you do, because you don't have to listen to every piece of advice that you get. Okay, so the few sentences I picked out to read from my personal statement are, I also enjoy the study of domestic legal issues. At the Cambridge Law Masterclass, We examined whether banning assisted suicide is a proportionate way of protecting the rights of vulnerable people. I question whether the Supreme Court should make a ruling on such a contentious issue, since I believe that judges must remain independent to make decisions without fear of consequence. However, in listening to the podcast, How Judges Decide by Professor Sharp, I learned of possible influences on judicial decisions that could hinder this competency. The reason I um, picked out these few lines from my personal statement is because I think it shows an entire chain of reasoning, which I think is absolutely important for students to show in their personal statement. For example, I start by pointing out that I enjoy the study of domestic legal issues. The reason I point this out is because earlier on in my personal statement, I spend a lot of time talking about my interest for international law. So I needed to show that I understood that actually the course covered both aspects and this was me moving on to look at something else. Something important I'd recommend that you guys all look at is the course structure for for law in particular because it can vary at different universities. Try and understand what the focus of your the university you're aspiring to is and to an extent tailor your university uh, sorry tailor your personal statement to show an understanding or to show that you've taken the initiative to do that research. Moving on from the domestic legal issues point I also pointed out that I'd attended the Cambridge Law Masterclass So this was my own external engagement with a reputable program. It shows that I've taken the time out of my um, busy A-level schedule to look into the law and look into something that they run already for university students. Following on from that, I offered my own opinion and essentially it was an example of my own critical engagement with the subject. I suggested that I believe that judges must remain independent on these kind of issues. Whilst you don't want to be too opinionated, especially um, with a subject like law, which you might not have studied at A-levels, it's important to show that you've thought critically and actually it's not just the case that you're reading things and taking them in, but you're also thinking very carefully about how they relate to you and relate to the world around you. And then finally, picking up on the podcast, this is about showing the chain, how your starting interest began and how you followed it through multiple stages of engagement.